Hello and welcome to another episode of Chasing Green Arrows. Uh, today I have with me a very special guest, uh, Tariq Reddy. TK, what's up, man? How are you doing? Good. What's up with you? How are you? I'm doing well, man. You excited that football's back? Yeah, so excited. I was uh, depressed without it, honestly. Yeah, man, it's great to have it back. And like, are you enjoying the crowd noises? Does it feel weird or like, is it okay watching the games for you? Uh, honestly, a lot of people uh, don't like the crowd noises. But I like it because uh, watching without the noise just sounds like uh, like I'm in a fireball or something watching <laughs> yeah. random people playing football. Yeah, random uh, pickleball. Like, yeah, yeah, like a training session. Yeah. So uh, listening to the crowd noises makes it uh, like I can, I uh, it's, it makes it more exciting for. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, really watchable. Like uh, especially for me, like uh, I'm enjoying it. Of course, it's not uh, the same without fans, but I think it's. Uh, it's better than not without the noise, right? Like like you said, it's yeah, not the like only a- thing I don't like is uh, they don't celebrate as much when they score now. Yeah, because I don't social know social distancing, know bro. No, no, they don't like they don't even so, uh, celebrate like like De Bruyne yeah. scored yesterday a penalty. Yeah, and he just like he didn't even smile. He just walked away as if you're in training. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but hopefully we have fans back and everything gets back to normal. But uh, you watched the FA Cup games. Uh, your thoughts uh, initially, like uh, uh, United, Arsenal, Chelsea and City have all gone through big, all the big teams. Yeah. I think United and Arsenal were lucky to go through. I wouldn't say lucky, but it, it was a rusty game for them. But yeah, your thoughts on those games? First, I don't think the, all the big teams went through. <laughs> There's one <laughs> team there. <laughs> uh, You're hinting on uh, Arsenal, huh? No, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's United versus Chelsea, right? And yeah, City yeah, Arsenal. That's right. So it's going to be City versus uh, uh, United or Chelsea. You're not giving Arsenal any chance in the semifinal? What if... Uh, uh, honestly, uh, I, I can't give... The, I don't think they have a chance. Every, every game, every year, you think Arsenal are going to get better, but... Something like they're cursed. I don't understand. They change their manager, change their players. But I think uh, it mostly shows that their players are not up for it. They're they're not as uh, disciplined as other teams like Chelsea or United. Do you think the fact that they do win games in between it like uh, hinders the fact that they actually have problems? Like uh, like now they've won two games on the bounce. They might beat Norwich, and then. Does that sort of ignore the issue, the actual issues they have, and then that's why again they go into a bad run as well instead of going and like changing the team up and changing the tactics and stuff. I mean, uh, I think it shows that they have skill that, and uh, that they're winning. Uh, it's just that they they get over themselves. Like uh, they're they're from uh, they the team is in London, so I'm sure the players they they get there. Uh, Arsenal has one of the biggest fan bases, so the player wins a game. And then he goes partying in London, and then no, really, and then the people, the the fans see him, and he gets over. He thinks he's better better than he actually is. Like uh, Gendouzi is an example. <laughs> uh, so many players in Arsenal have yeah. <laughs> had such uh, reputations of uh, thinking they're better than they are, and uh, as a result, they end up uh, messing up every now and again. But what does it say about the like the owners as well and the the actual the think tank who 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 is supposed to buy the players and stuff? Do they just like try to pacify after a few wins? They just think that the fans will be pacified and stuff, and then ignore it when um, they actually start losing. The the I'm, I don't really know much about their board and all I hear from Arsenal fan TV is Stan Kroenke. Or, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know who this guy is, but I think he's just a businessman. He just wants them not to be relegated. He yeah. wanted them first, the top four. Top four, and Then yeah. Arsenal Wenger left. Now he doesn't, he just wants them top 10. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, as long as they make enough uh, fans, uh, fan sales, like, then he's happy. So he really doesn't care about football. You can see with uh, the way he does his transfers. But to be honest, they, they bought Pepe for, what, like 70 million. Like, yeah, 70, 75 million. Stop million. blaming everyone. Just it's the, the players not, are not taking it seriously, I think. Uh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. And yeah. Um, your thoughts on the United Chelsea game? Because Chelsea have been in red hot form. I think Lampard's doing a decent job. He's doing a, actually a, oh. an ex- exceptional job uh, so far, uh, especially how he's carried himself uh, since the break. Chelsea look. I think, uh, yeah, I think Lampard, uh, ever since he was appointed until until now, 
has done one of the best jobs, like uh, for me, a contender for manager of the season. Uh, even though he's fourth place or he's not winning the league or anything, he he started off with a team without Hazard. Uh, you can see when a team loses their biggest player how how much they struggle. Like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo when he left Madrid, that season was horrible. Uh, and Chelsea, same thing with Hazard, but they picked up and they're actually they're actually just as good as they were last year, maybe even better. The team uh, doesn't revolve around one player now. Yeah. He has a great squad. Uh, every player plays well. And they didn't have uh, uh, any big transfers uh, l- this season, right? So uh, now next season, they'll be even better with uh, the signing of Warner and Ziak from Ajax. Uh, definitely. Exactly. Yeah, I'll make them. And uh, your thoughts on United? Uh, there's a lot of inconsistency, but like when they have their fit 11, they look a uh, decent side, don't they? I mean, uh, honestly, yeah, I, I think uh, Ole is better than people think he is. He, uh, I think he with the problem, off really, he was a bit tactically, right? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm not, I don't really know much about tactics. In against football. the smaller, smaller team, uh, against the smaller teams. Yeah, he he normally counter attacks, um, and uh, whenever he plays like the big teams, like he has such a good record against City and uh, other like big teams. Like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he won like most of the games yeah, against yeah. Guardiola, which he beat is uh, City three times this season. He beat Chelsea three times this season as well. Yeah, that's that's not luck. Uh, it just shows he he knows how to play the counter attack really well. But like yeah. you said, for the smaller teams, uh, he can't counterattack. He has to be able to play with a proper possession football. Yeah. Which uh, he's, uh, I think he's improved. Like that was his issue and he improved. And one of the things that show is uh, Pogba and Fernandez playing together with uh, Matic defensive mid. Yeah. It's showing a very attacking side. Yeah. Just like how... Uh, De Bruyne and David Silva play together, and then they have Fernandinho. So they're they're playing that uh, attacking attacking football, which was lacking. I think yeah, like when the first eleven is fit, uh, they look a dangerous team. The problem is, as we saw in Norwich against Norwich, when you have the second string, there's a lot of dead weight there. Uh, Lingard is off. Mata looks uh, like he's lost a lot of pace. Lingard is Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stop talking about Arsenal. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? Like even uh, Delo was very poor against Norwich. Uh, like the second string players now, like Matic is the perfect player uh, to play behind Pogba and. Uh, uh, Bruno, right? But then if Matic gets injured, we don't have that perfect foil. Like McTominay is not as uh, composed as Matic when it comes to just like, you know, killing the ball, uh, destroying attacks. Uh, even Fred is not exactly like they sometimes go ahead of the ball. So um, I think they'll need some backup. Like the problem is probably their second string uh, because if a player gets injured here and there, they're going to struggle. Uh, I agree with you. However, um, the reason McTominay doesn't play that role is uh, more so because he's, uh, I think, he's a box, box to box midfielder. Yeah. And uh, to play that role, you have to be a proper defensive mid, which Matic is. Yeah. But, you know, Matic is not as world class as he used to be. So I think uh, United they need should a replacement. Go. Yeah. They need a replacement or they need to teach McTominay how to play defensive mid because he, he's really, he's actually really good at uh, his own position. Yeah, and uh, like quickly about United, if we if we would do like two or three signings, would you get a right wing Sancho, uh, a defensive mid and a centre back, or would you add like a add some other players as well? Like, if you were the United team. Okay, this is gonna sound uh, controversial, but I'll get a right back. I'll teach. It's a lot of teaching, but I'll teach. Uh, Juan Bissaka, man, you can't do that. Yeah, no, I'll teach him how to play centre back because he's one of the best defenders I've seen in the Premier League. Probably one of the best. But he does not know how to like run Forward. with the ball. He doesn't know how to dribble. He doesn't know how to cross. He has what like one or two assists this season. Look at uh, Trent. He has like yeah, <laughs> thirty I, goal I, involved. I mean, he's slowly improving, but like uh, yeah, there is a big difference between him but and Trent. There's Forward. some but things. Going, in, yeah, there's some things in football that you can't improve on, which is your technique and like your skill, and you're either born with it or, and he doesn't have it. He's more of just like slide tackle and take the ball off. Yeah. You could, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It sounds it's controversial, but if he played that center back, it could uh, 
could be good. And then, so yeah, so you get a right back. So you'd move him with Maguire? Attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. M Maguire, I don't know. Maguire is really good. It's just uh, he makes mistakes yeah. sometimes. And then, uh, and you're good with the left back? Are you Luke Shaw? I think uh, Brandon Williams is. Uh, yeah, even me. Is, has potential. They should like invest like in him and see if he's good enough. Yeah, and then uh, Luke Shaw's improved ever since the break, but maybe not quite there. Uh, defensive mid, you need a proper defensive midfielder. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming you keep all your players. I think uh, I think just keep uh, by Igalo, keep him as the sub backup striker. striker, yeah, backup striker, and then that's it. You're good. And Sancho. Oh, and De Gea has to go. <laughs> De Gea has to go get get yes. back to Dean and Henderson. Yeah, Dean Henderson is really good. Oh yeah, and, he's coming. He comes back on loan, I'm guessing. And uh, Sancho would be a good signing, right, with uh, Greenwood as backup for the right wing spot. Definitely, but that's a, that's a tough signing. Like, yeah, if he comes, then that would be uh, really that's good. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, and let's quickly just go through the predictions. Uh, FA Cup, let's go semi-final one, Arsenal City. What's your score prediction? Uh, where is it? In uh, Wembley. Oh, it's all in Wembley now. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> no fans, but yeah. It's uh, in Wembley. Both oh, teams now, are that Wembley. It's in, now that it's in Wembley, uh, Arsenal actually have a chance. Uh, I take that back. You think they, so? They usually play well in Wembley. Yeah. The only yeah. problem I have, I mean, I don't have a problem, like, uh, if either team wins or loses, but, like, the only th concern I have for uh, Arsenal is that City won't be playing the Champions League at that time, right? If, if the Champions League goes on at the same time, they might have focused more on that, but now they'll be focusing fully on the FA Cup. Normally, they have the yeah. league going on, the Champions League going on. You have, like, three, four leagues going on. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And City are in all tournaments, right? But here, yeah. they're going to be focusing solely on going, getting into the final. And that's when City are very dangerous, you know what I mean? Uh, like yeah, I've seen uh, them make mistakes this season, but I don't know. Under like when they want to win, like I think it's going to be difficult for Arsenal. Yeah, actually, uh, I agree with you. I, I forgot about that. Uh, uh, City's going to focus all their energy on Arsenal, and uh, yeah, Arsenal will probably be up for the game because it's like their only trophy left that they can get. But I still think uh, City will win, maybe three-one. 3-1 City and the United Chelsea game, this is going to be a tough prediction. Uh, I think 1-1 one, one, and then penalties. Not sure. Uh, maybe Chelsea will win because De Gea is... Uh, I don't know <laughs> if he'll save any. He's yeah. just out of confidence. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Like, he's making yeah. some... Uh, the thing is, like, he never used to make these errors, right? Like, it's... Now getting very consistent. Like he's making it's, one error every two, three games now. It seems as though he's depressed or something. Like I don't know. It just feels as though the he has mental, not not like like mentally. Uh, he's not there. He's not uh, motivated. You know. Yeah. It's, he's, yeah. It's surprising because goalkeepers are supposed to get better with age, right? Like so. Yeah. Exactly. In my opinion, he didn't reach his peak yet, but like. The mistakes he's making, maybe he peaked too early. So, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, maybe yeah. a change of club might make him. I don't know if he's depressed or something. Maybe back to Spain. Like, yeah, back to Spain might like yeah. get him back in the zone. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I think we got the FA Cup covered. I, yeah, I'm going like three zero City and two one United. Uh, okay. But yeah, let's see how that goes. And uh, the top four, um, do you see as it is, do you see Leicester dropping or Chelsea dropping or do you see it uh, in the Premier League, these four teams going into the Champions League next year? The current I think, uh, of course, uh, Liverpool City and then uh, uh, for third and fourth, uh, Leicester is not doing that well. They have a few points above Chelsea, but... Uh, I see Chelsea going into I, I, third and then Leicester, that spot getting vulnerable for United and Wolves uh, getting an opportunity, uh, the Leicester spot. Because if Leicester lose a, lose a game now, like in the next two, three uh, games, uh, then they have to play United as well uh, in the last game of the season. Yeah, I, I think United and Chelsea will make it. You think so? Like, like you said, Chelsea third, United fourth. What about Wolves? Because their fixture list is pretty good as well. Like, uh, and they've been killing it uh, recently. Uh, as good as Wolves are, they... 
they don't their squad is not uh, enough to challenge they they won three games in a row but 1-0 2-0 1-0 it's like it's not enough to keep them going they're going to drop some points soon i think all right and uh... So you're going uh, uh, City, Liverpool, United, Ch- uh, Chelsea, United. Liverpool, City, Chelsea, United. Yeah. Chelsea, United. Okay. And yeah. now let's round up by talking about the Spanish league. This league looks like the most interesting right now, right? Because the title hasn't been decided yet. Uh, right now, Barca dropped some points, so Madrid take the two-point lead now. Uh, how impressed have you been with Zidane, man? Because like, no Ronaldo, um, Hazard is not at his best, uh, but Madrid still top of the league. Um, it's very impressive and it's still mysterious to me because uh, if you watch Real Madrid's games, uh, uh, they, they never play in the formation that is out there. So if it's 4-3-3, Hazard's on the left and uh, let's say Vinicius is on the right, you end up seeing Valverde come on the right, Hazard playing in the middle, Benzema playing on the left. It's so confusing. So in terms of tactic, tactics, I don't know what Zidane is doing. So that's yeah. why they say he uses black magic. <laughs> and uh, but the one thing he's gotten down is the defense, and it's been uh, Real Madrid's defense this year is the best defense since 2007. So it's a record. Uh, How is Ramos still playing, defense. man? This guy's been playing since I started watching football. Like I mean, it's been like ages, like, and he's still there. Like I can't believe it. In the same shirt, same jersey. Yeah. <laughs> A funny fact is uh, Zidane's last season was Ramos's first season with Real Madrid. Uh, so that's oh, how long okay. when Zidane was playing. Yeah, Holy when Zidane God. was playing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and uh, no, R- Ramos just a uh, very uh, strong mentality, very fit, uh, good at training. So that keeps has him he going. lost his pace or just, and like has his positioning got better? His positioning has always been like Pricey, bad. Yeah. Yeah. He's always up front. But if you watch uh, the first two games after the break, uh, which was against Eibar and uh, Valencia, he started two goals. Uh, one game he scored a goal. The other game he uh, tackled the guy, passed it to Hazard, ran, made a run. Hazard passed it back to him and he scored. Like he, he created a goal. Wow. This guy uh, is just very strange, honestly. Yeah. He's uh, amazing, honestly. He scores. It's going to be defend. difficult to replace him. Oh, 100%. How many more seasons probably, do you think he has? Probably three more seasons. Three more seasons. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And, uh, yeah, and Barca. Barca's uh, season is going slowly, uh, going down. Yeah. And... Uh, both teams dropped quite a few points in between, but now it looks like Madrid have settled down and they're like, uh, like you said, the defense looks really solid uh, and they're just not letting teams through. But Barcelona, on the other hand, are like still dropping here and there. Yeah. it's uh, They've had tougher fixtures. Uh, the last three fixtures for them were really tough. But uh, you can just see Barca is not the same as they used to be. It's, they're too reliant on Messi now. Yeah. Yeah. The midfield doesn't look as strong as it used to be. No, definitely not. And uh, looking at the upcoming fixtures, uh, what does it look likely? Uh, do you see Madrid dropping any points or do you see them winning the league? I see uh, Madrid maybe dropping and maybe two games out of the next uh, six. But Barca will also drop two in the next six. Uh, which means Madrid will win the league. I, I think Madrid will win by uh, three, three or four points ahead of Barca. It's because uh, Barca's next two games are is, uh, Atletico at home, Oof. and then they have uh, Villarreal away, and uh, Real Madrid's next two games is Getafe at home and Bilbao away. So those are the most difficult fixtures for both teams. And it looks like Real Madrid's fixtures are... From those two, are easier. Relatively, yeah. Relatively, relatively to Barca. So, and the rest are all easy. So it looks like they they both might drop two game those two games, but it won't make a difference to Real Madrid since they're already on top. Yeah, and it'll be insane if Madrid win. Like I don't think uh, they were given 
I think Barcelona were favorites like starting off from the season, but like the way Zidane's got them playing together is incredible. It is honestly, and, and uh, it's uh, it's as as amazing as it is. It's not as good as it should be. Yeah, which people. Definitely. It's mostly Barca's underperforming. Underperformance, yeah. Yeah. Hazard is as well like he's been disappointing right this season like he hasn't been fully fit uh, and when he's played he hasn't really performed to the his level. So Hazard before he got injured was uh wasn't recording the the stats that you would see usually the goals and assists. Yeah. But he was having a really good season in terms of linking up with the team and and then his best game was against PSG where he got injured and uh the injury was so bad took him out for like 3 4 months. And when he came back, which is now, you can see he's uh, he gets a bit uh, he struggles and he's a bit uh, scared to take on players because of his injury. But I think with patience, uh, he'll come back to how he he was before. Yeah, and uh, Mbappe coming in the summer to Madrid looks likely. Or I don't know. I don't know. Any, he's coming for sure, but I don't know when. Like, is it this summer? Next summer? Like, uh, it doesn't make. Uh, won't know anymore with uh, all these yeah, with rumors. Yeah, the transfer market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that'll be really interesting. I think they'll need him to compete for the Champions League. Uh, that will give yeah. them a big shot in the arm when they get, once they get Mbappe, if they yeah, get. Yeah, for him. sure. Uh, but yeah, I think we've covered most of the uh, most of the things for this week. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Do you have any any last final Likewise. thoughts? Uh, or Arsenal or anything? I just want to oh, yeah, TV and chill. <laughs> you know, one, one last question. What are your thoughts on David Luiz extending a contract right after uh, he got red carded? What's see, up with that? Is, uh, this is... Uh, I don't mean to... Uh, like, I'm, it's a serious question. I'm not trying to like make fun of David Luiz or anything. It's a no, I know, I know. Uh, it just, that's, that's one of the things. Like, uh, you see uh, uh, Rob Holding, for example. He sees what David Luiz just did. And then he got extended the contract. He got awarded for what he did. You think he's going to care to play, to train and be good? He's going to be like, oh, if David Luiz could stay here for one more year, I can stay here for five years. (laughs) The problem with Arsenal is that they give their players too many chances. Yeah, too many chances. That's the thing. Right. And, and the thing is, because of the inconsistency, like when they're, when they're losing, everyone's criticizing everything. But then they suddenly go on a winning streak and they forget about everything. Yeah. Like That's even, the best part, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> As a neutral. <laughs> I mean, just before the lockdown, if you remember, Arteta was on a good run. Like they were playing some good football, right? Yeah. Uh, which is uh, like Arsenal, they are a decent team. They have that thing. But the thing is, then they go on such a bad run. Like, you know, after the lockdown, they played terrible football. And yeah. uh, again, they started criticizing and everything. And now they're on a run again. So like because of these inconsistencies, it makes it more entertaining at the same time. But also it's difficult. Like, like you said, they need to make radical changes, but they're not doing that because of these inconsistencies probably. Exactly. Yeah. That's spot on. Oh. Do you think? And uh, just lastly, uh, last question. I'm sorry. Do you think Mope is a cheat? <laughs> Mope, uh, I think. Uh, what what, what he did? You mean? Yeah, like his, I don't yeah. think he did anything on. Like to be honest with you, like you can have a different view, but I don't really think he tried to injure him like that. Maybe he, no, he I, could yeah. have stopped. He could have stopped, but like he didn't injure him on purpose. I don't think he injured him on purpose, but. He wanted to put him off his game, try to like uh, shoulder him, let the ball fall on the ground, maybe go shoot it, score. He was trying to score a goal. He was trying to be like a very no. uh, re- resilient striker. His intention but, wasn't uh, wrong. It, it, it's, that's debatable because I don't yeah. know. Like, because cause most of the times when you go for a ball like that against the keeper, you're not going to injure the guy for six months. Yeah, you're yeah. just going to hurt him, maybe shoulder him, he'll fall on the ground. Yeah. It happens, you know. So yeah. it wasn't that bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, 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 yeah, like he could have actually stopped if he wanted, maybe. But uh, I don't think he was looking to injure him in that. Yeah, way. it's like you can't compare that to a two-footed tackle. Yeah. That you would see uh, nowadays. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think uh, we've rounded everything up. It was a lot of fun talking to you. Uh, hopefully, you. we'll see some entertaining games this week. The Premier League is back from tomorrow. United versus Brighton. And uh, we'll have uh, some future dis- discussions as well about the fantasy sure. and everything else. But it was good to talk to you and have a good night. You too, man. Thank Take you. Care. You too. Take care. You too.